What is the great white hype winking at? Well, he's winking at Jackson DeVille, who is fornicating the air in celebration. Yummy. The Jaguars mascot was roaming the field wearing nothing but an American flag thong. If Betsy Ross could see what's become of her creation, she probably would have just put down the sewing needle and picked up a different kind of needle. A record nine quarterbacks who didn't start the season took the reins this week, and here's to you, Brian Robinson, for wearing the biggest ass hat I have ever seen. He said his friend has a big hat company, and I said don't ever take business advice from that friend. Today, we're gonna look at the best plays, the worst plays, players, games, and things from NFL Week 12, including Thanksgiving football. Let's do it. That's good sports. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel and over at benchwarmerbrew.com, we got the 8-bit orange shirts. And today, Monday is the last day for the buy one, get one 50% off on the Bench Warmer Brew Coffee. Benchwarmerbrew.com, go get your family a nice little Christmas gift. All right, I usually glaze over the Thursday game, but since we had three on Turkey Day, let's go back. Best, the conclusion of the Bills and Lions game. Worst, the Lions mistakes that cost them the win. They miss a field goal, take a safety, and receive a roughing the passer penalty in the red zone to open the doors for a Bills touchdown. But catch a small break on the missed PAT. Worst, Jim Nance then refusing to take responsibility for jinxing. Do not talk to me about an announcer's jinx. Michael Badgley has not missed a kick all year. Field goal or PAT? Well, then I won't Don't say. Don't even talk about it. 29 yards. About it. Here's Badgley's kick. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> no, no. Point here to make the margin four, and it is no oh. good. I had mentioned earlier he had that long streak. Ever since you said it. Oh, yeah. No, no. That's not on me. Worst, Matt Milano made about a 1,000 plays in this game, but the one we remember is him missing this tackle on DeAndre Swift that set up the Lions in scoring position, which was furthered by a brilliant play call on fourth and inches by the Lions. Amon, ra 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 St. Brown with the jet sweep. I mention that because just three plays later, the Lions would be ridiculed for taking this shot on third and one instead of running the ball. Hot take, I like the call. Jared Goff just needs to make a better throw. The Bills had three timeouts, so if they get the stop, they're still in pretty good shape. The Money Badger redeems himself for an earlier miss by having no trouble with the curve to tie this game. Best two men beat Goff on Thanksgiving and their names were Josh Allen and Stefan Diggs. This is Josh Allen's best throw since injuring his elbow. Tyler slaps a debase one more time and makes a clutch game winner and the Bills get the first back-to-back -back wins at Ford Field since 2016. Yes, the Bills. Best, the Giants scored a Thanksgiving Day touchdown for the first time since 1938, but that wasn't enough to avoid being swept by the Cowboys this season. Worst, this incredible C.D. Lamb catch, not counting because of, you know, rules. Again, if the catch is worthy of a top five spot in the best catches of the week category, it should be ruled a catch no matter what. Best primetime Kirk Cousins destroys the narrative against the New England Patriots in a Thursday night game worthy of our eyeball time. Worst even as a Patriot hater, I have to admit that this is a catch and touchdown by Hunter Henry. Just watch this play from Travis Kelsey on week three and tell me why Kelsey's catch counts and Henry's doesn't. The NFL is broken. Worst, the NFL's dry ass turkey. It was a little dry. <laughs> Kirk Cousins after the game said, my only complaint about the turkey was that it didn't taste more like human flesh. Best quarterback? How could I not give this one to Mike 
My jersey is already in the Hall of Fame, White, who got the start over poor Zach Wilson for the Jets. White put up 315 yards and a trio of touchdown passes against the Bears defense, including a couple tuds to first round receiver Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson was the only wide receiver to catch two passing touchdowns this weekend. Tight end Dalton Schultz had two on Thanksgiving, but you know, he's a tight end, not a receiver. White also finished the weekend with the highest passer rating in the NFL at 149.3. After the game, Mike White looked directly at Zach Wilson and said, who's the whitest now, bitch? White was so good on Sunday that even Elijah Moore was happy after scoring a touchdown. So happy that he said, and I quote, I was talking to the ball yesterday. I was like, damn, you already know how I feel about you. I was kissing it. It was just being patient. Breaking news, Elijah Moore has been suspended by the NFL for quote, fucking a football. White joins Patrick Mahomes as the last two quarterbacks with multiple 300 yard, three touchdown games in their first four starts. Worst quarterback, Tom Brady. Was he the worst QB this week? Not really, but he's the worst version of Tom Brady we've ever seen. I mean, he lost to the Browns in overtime. The Browns started Bill Belichick's Hall of Fame career by firing him in 1995. They started Tom's Hall of Fame career by drafting Spurgeon Wynn in the sixth round instead of Tom Brady. And I think they just ended Tom's Hall of Fame career with this victory. Tom Brady said he'd retire when he sucks. Well, you stink just like the skunk at this game. Maybe that's just the smell of Deshaun Watson returning though. Best stat, Nick Chubb won this game in overtime for the Browns and in doing so, he scored the first overtime touchdown for the Browns since 1991 when David Brandon walked off the Chargers with the pick six. And truly a great moment for Brandons and a great moment for guys with two first names. This game also receives the award for the most fucks used. I can't fuck with you, baby. But in the words of Tom Brady, that was fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Best game? Well, after seeing so many defensive struggles this season, watching the Seahawks and the Raiders shoot it out in Seattle was a huge breath of fresh air. The game started with the Derek Carr interception and a touchdown run from Kenneth Walker and ended in overtime. These two teams combined for 74 points and 948 yards of offense in this marathon. The Raiders Raiders produced 576 yards of offense, which makes me think the Seahawks defense is, uh, how you say, not good. Best individual performance? This simply has to go to the Raiders and running back Yash Jacobs, who carried the ball 33 times for 229 yards and a couple touchdowns, including the 86 yard game winner. 303 total yards of offense for Jacobs. Most in Raiders history. Most since Adrian Peterson's 2000 yard season. And I don't know if it was his fifth year option getting declined or if it's Josh McDaniel's offense. Probably not, but Jacobs is now well over a thousand yards rushing and comfortably leading the league in that category. Josh Jacobs is also the fourth player in the Super Bowl era with 300 scrimmage yards and two touchdowns in the same game. His 86 yard walk-off score is the fourth longest overtime touchdown from scrimmage in NFL history. It was also the minimum number of yards needed to save Josh McDaniel's job. This game, also featured my best play. Well, let's just call uh, this best cheating as the Seahawks Daryl Taylor runs onto the field from the sideline during a Derek Carr interception and starts blocking on the return. Best offense? Well, I'm gonna have to give it to the birds. As I just mentioned, the leading rusher this weekend was Josh Jacobs, but the second and third leading rushers were Jalen Hurts, and Miles Sanders with 157 and 143 yards respectively, totaling exactly 300 yards. The Eagles thoroughly dominated the Packers defense, totaling 363 rushing yards on the night. Jalen Hurts had 100 in the first quarter. Hurts became the fourth player in the Super Bowl era to pass and rush for over 150 yards in the same game, joining Mike Vick, Colin Kaepernick, and of course, Ravens quarterback, Joe Flacco. 
Wait, sorry, that, <laughs> duh, duh, that's not right. I meant Trent Dilfer. Had he murdered any dogs afterward, he would have tied Mike Vick as the only quarterback to put up those stats and also murder dogs in the same day. Worst stat? The Packers defense allowed Jalen Hurts to become the first quarterback in NFL history to have 125 yards passing and rushing in the first half of a game. I think that's emblematic of how good the Eagles have been and a testament to the Packers' futility this season. Worst game slash best defense? If two teams can only combine for 13 points, then congratulations. You've secured the worst game of the week honors. That was the case for the Jets and Patriots last week, and it's true for the 49ers and the Saints this week. The only difference is that the 49ers scored all 13 points and the Saints hung their first goose egg since before Drew Brees was their QB. It happened all the way back in 2001, and it also happened against the Niners. A 332 game streak comes to an end. The 49ers defense just dominated the Saints physically for three hours. The same amount of time it took for Saint Cassian to be hacked to death by children in Italy in 636 AD. Saint reference. Worst play, Kyler Murray threw an interception on fourth and one inside Chargers territory when all they really needed to do was give the ball to James Conner who was averaging nearly five yards per carry against the Chargers defense. Kyler said after the game, schematically, I mean, they kind of, we, we were kind of fucked. <laughs> what a ringing endorsement of Cliff Kingsbury. Say what you want about Kyler, but I respect any man willing to take responsibility for his team's loss by wearing the L on his jacket like a scarlet letter. Best catch, Joe Burrow threw a perfect back shoulder pass to wide receiver Trenton Irwin, who reached back and snagged this ball while dragging the toes inbounds. Irwin is a 26 year old out of Stanford who just scored his first TD a week ago and he's already showing a serious rapport with Joe Burrow. Jamar Chase, I'm sorry, but your job is not safe. Also, High T Higgins had two tremendous catches in this game. A touchdown and a key grab late in the fourth. Luckiest moment also from this game goes to Titans receiver Traylon Burks to get his first NFL touchdown off a Derrick Henry fumble, which he recovered in the end zone. Unluckiest moment? Well, Tennessee's Kevin Strong getting flagged for hitting the Bengals center on a field goal, ensuring the Titans would not get another chance with the ball. Best moment of the week goes to Brian Robinson, getting 100 yards for the first time as the Commanders defeated the Falcons, making the NFC South the first division the NFL may send to the XFL at the conclusion of the season. Robinson's locker room speech made everyone cry. He made big hats, so y'all want one? Let me know. Worst blowout? The Texans, who are down 30 to zero at halftime against the Dolphins. The haters will say Tua's not as good as Patrick Mahomes. Will then explain this shit. He extends a play for an eternity and then throws a touchdown to an elite tight end. Same friggin' guy in my eyes. Shout out though to Kyle Allen starting in place of Davis Mills and throwing an interception to Rip Van Ginkle. Van Ginkle is back, baby, and best finish? Well, the best finish of the week took place in Jacksonville. Duval, where the Jaguars stormed back like COVID every winter. Trailing 19 to 10 with 556 left in the fourth quarter, Trevor Lawrence converts a fourth and eight, hitting Zay Jones, and then finds Jamal Agnew in the end zone to cut the lead to two. All great comebacks require blunders, and the Ravens provided on two plays. Devin DuVernay gave us one of the most ill-advised, pathetic kick returns of the year, netting six yards, to which Gus Edwards said, hold my beer, and then fumbled the ball away to the Yaguars. Honestly, that's what good teammates do. Make a bigger mistake to take the heat off the guy who screwed up first. Now the Jags not only tied the game on a controversial Trevor Lawrence touchdown pass to Marvin Jones, but take a one point lead with the big balls call going for the two point conversion, but it wasn't over yet because Lamar Action Jackson miraculously got the Ravens into field goal range, which for Justin Tucker means a 67 yard attempt. Tucker's kick was on the line, but it fell well short, proving he is indeed human. And for the Jags, it's the first win in franchise history 
when they've trailed by seven or more points in the last minute of regulation. Zay Jones finished with the most receiving yards of any receiver this week at 145. And worst finish, well, that's gonna go to my Broncos and Russell Wilson, who threw the saddest uh, 300th touchdown pass in NFL history. This tied in with John Elway, and in ironic fashion, he did it in the least clutch situation imaginable. But I covered that game already <laughs> in the new, 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 new worst game ever. And the hardest hit of the week, well, that belongs to Rams rookie tight end Roger Carter Jr., who might have put Sean McVay in concussion protocol right along with Matthew Stafford after he clocked his head coach and ran onto the field. Which means Sean McVay's face understands the pain of being a Rams fan this season. Thanks for watching week 12 best and worst. Don't forget to check out the Broncos Panthers recap and the new, 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 new worst game I have ever seen. And tomorrow, every Tuesday, I do power rankings. So come back and check out those.